everybody, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. So today we are making a honey garlic chicken stir fry. This is a really easy recipe. I've made it tons of times and it works out every single time. So before we get started, let's go over the ingredients that you're gonna need. You're gonna need some vegetable oil. You're gonna need soy sauce. You can use either vegetable broth or chicken broth. I'm using vegetable broth for personal preference. You're gonna need cornstarch, honey, garlic, broccoli, carrots, and some boneless chicken breast. So the last thing you're gonna need is salt and pepper, but that's just for, for flavor, just to taste. So go ahead and gather these ingredients, come back, and then we're gonna get started. Don't forget to wash your hands before you come back. And then if you want to get a head start, go ahead and grab a large nonstick frying pan. So go ahead, gather your ingredients, grab your fry pan, wash your hands, and let's get started. Okay, so hopefully you have gathered your ingredients, washed your hands, and you've got a pan here ready to go on the stove. So the first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna take your vegetable oil and you're gonna measure out one teaspoon, one teaspoon of vegetable oil, and you're actually just going to add it to your fry pan here. So again, that was one teaspoon of vegetable oil that we just added to our fry pan. So my stove is not yet on, so I haven't turned that on yet, so don't do that quite yet. So. The first thing we need to do is we need to cut our carrots. So we actually only need one cup of thinly sliced carrots for this recipe. So I actually might not even need the full two carrots that I have here. But we are gonna go ahead and slice them very thinly and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I've just cut off the tip of my carrot there and just very carefully with my knife, I'm gonna cut very thin slices of carrot. And the reason we want it thin is because they're gonna cook much easier. And for a stir fry, we want our vegetables to be tender, which means they aren't super crunchy, but they're not really, really soft either. So the thinner you slice them, the better, and the easier they're gonna be to cook. So I'll kind of show you what I have so far. So this is kind of what I have so far. So as you can see, they're quite thin. So that's about how thin I'm cutting my carrots. And I'm just gonna add them to my one cup here as I go. So again, one cup of carrots. And I'm just gonna keep slicing them nice and thin. Please be careful with your fingers here. Keep your hands far away from the knife. So just keep going. I'm at about half a cup right now. Of course, just like any other video, pause it if you need to, if I'm going a bit too fast. There's nothing wrong with pausing the video. Okay, so I'm almost at a cup here. So it actually only required me to use about one full carrot. Okay, so yeah, I've got about one full carrot here. Okay, so I'm actually just gonna put the rest of my carrots to the side here. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab kind of a medium sized bowl here. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that. So I'm just grabbing a medium sized bowl here. 
Okay, I'm gonna put my carrots in my bowl here and just set it aside. And you'll see why I'm doing that in just a minute. So now let's get started on our broccoli. So go ahead and grab your broccoli that you have. I'm gonna start with my smaller one. Okay. So we need two cups of broccoli for this recipe. So with broccoli, we don't need this huge stem here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. Okay, and I'm just gonna put that aside. So we actually only want the tops of the broccoli here. So I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to cut pretty close to the top of my broccoli there so that I just have a small head of broccoli. So you wanna try and get these pretty small, about this size here. So I just cut mine in half. So just small heads of broccoli. And we're actually just going to continue doing this until we have two cups of broccoli. Again, you want small, small heads of broccoli so that they're a bit easier to eat later on. I'll hold one in my hand so you can kind of see the size. So that's what I have. It's quite small. So two cups. I'm almost at one cup here. It's okay if they're a little bit big. Um, they are going to be sauteed, so they are gonna kind of reduce in size just a little bit. Okay, so there's one cup of broccoli and I'm just gonna go ahead and add it to my bowl here. So we need one more cup of broccoli, but it's also, this recipe is really good because you can kind of add um, as much or as little as you want. If you want to add more broccoli, go ahead and do that. If you wanna add more carrots, go ahead and do that. If you wanna add less, you can. It's a really great recipe to make kind of however you'd like. Or I know with this recipe, it's really great to add bell peppers if you'd like as well. That's really nice in a stir fry. So just keep cutting your broccoli. Broccoli is pretty easy to cut, thankfully. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit off this head of broccoli here. Please watch your fingers when you're doing this. Okay. This looks like it's gonna give me exactly two cups at the end here. Sometimes you can actually tear the little pieces of broccoli as well, like I'm doing right now. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna add it to my bowl here. And we're gonna set this aside. Okay, so I'm gonna put my cutting board to the side here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the camera a little bit closer to my pan here so you can see what I'm doing. But go ahead and turn on your pan to medium heat and we're gonna get ready to saute our broccoli and our carrots. Okay, so we are at the stove now and my pan is on medium heat. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab that bowl that's full of broccoli and carrots and you're just gonna put them in your pan. You should be hearing a sizzle here. With a wooden spoon, we're just gonna mix them up a little bit here. Okay. 
Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are actually going to cook these for about four to five minutes in our pan here until they are nice and tender. So until they're a little bit softer than they are now, which is going to take about four minutes. You don't need to stir constantly here, just once in a while is fine. So they, they'll get a little bit brown and they'll get a little bit softer than they are right now. And um, I should mention this, the bowl that you had them in earlier, keep this and just put this aside because we are going to put these back in that bowl as soon as they are done cooking because after this, we are going to start cooking our chicken. So make sure you keep that bowl handy. So they're looking quite good. So again, um, if you're not really sure what vegetables are like when they're tender, just kind of play it by time. So like I said, four to five minutes on the stove in the fry pan if you're not too sure what tender vegetables look like. So four to five minutes is a good way to judge whether they're done or not. So it's already been about three minutes here. So we're gonna come back in about one or two minutes here to see how our vegetables look, and then we will continue. Okay, so it's been about one more minute, and my vegetables are almost done. I can kind of feel them with the wooden spoon, getting a little bit softer than they were before. So just keep on cooking them here for about one more minute. Hopefully you're following along with me. It's quite an easy recipe to make, which is why I chose it. Great for dinner and even great for lunch. I'm actually having this for lunch today. As you can see, the carrots are browning a little bit, and that's what we want. And if you were to kind of poke these with your wooden spoon, they would be a little bit, a little bit soft, a little bit softer than they were when we added them to the pan. So I'll give these about 30 more seconds. Make sure you have your bowl handy. Okay, I'm gonna turn off my stove and very carefully, you're probably not gonna be able to see what I'm doing here, but very carefully, you're going to put them in your bowl here. So I'm just tipping up my fry pan slightly using a wooden spoon and I'm just pushing them into my bowl. 
I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so those look great. So as you can see, I've just got my bowl full of veggies here. So I'm gonna put this aside. So again, just turn your stove off. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna add one tablespoon of vegetable oil to your pan. One tablespoon of vegetable oil. Okay. So again, my pan is off. And I've just added one tablespoon of oil and we're just preparing this for our chicken. So leave this here and grab your chicken and we are actually going to now slice and season our chicken. Okay everybody, so we are going to start slicing our chicken. So the recipe calls for about one pound of chicken. So that's actually about two of these large pieces right here. I have another one to the side if I'd like to use it. So you can kind of add as much chicken or as little chicken as you'd like. So if you feel more comfortable with an adult helping you with this part, that's totally fine, but it's really quite simple and I'm gonna try my best to explain to you how we're gonna cut this chicken. So we want it to be in about one inch pieces the pieces do not need to be perfect at all, and they're really just focusing on getting them into small pieces instead of big pieces. So that's kind of what we're focusing on here. So with my chicken here, I'm just gonna take a sharp knife, and with the end pieces, I'm just gonna cut them. That's about an inch already. When we get to this part here, when we get to the middle, we are actually going to cut them into little strips and then cut them in half like I did right there. So they're about little small one inch pieces. So again, once you get to the middle, just cut them in strips and then cut them in half or quarters if you need to. So once I get to the really middle here, I'm gonna cut it into three little cubes, like that. Try your best to get them to be the approximate same size, approximately. They don't have to be exactly the same size, but you wanna try to get them the same size so that they all cook evenly. Because if you have some smaller pieces and some bigger pieces, they are not going to cook as evenly as you'd like them to. Okay, so we've got one inch pieces here. You need a really sharp knife for this. Again, your pan is just to the side here. My stove is not on. one in half. Okay, so I'm almost done cutting my chicken here. I'm probably gonna use just this amount here, but if you'd like to add in your second piece of boneless chicken, please feel free to go for it. I'm using a little bit less than what the recipe calls for. But again, it calls for about two of these large pieces here. So for example, to the side here, I have another, another one here that I could cut, but I'm just gonna use this for now. So go ahead and cut your second piece of chicken if you'd like to use it. And then we are going to put it in the pan, put a little bit of salt and pepper on it, and we're gonna start cooking it, okay? So finish cutting your chicken and then come back. Okay, so I am done cutting all my chicken and something that's really important here that I need to mention right away is as soon as you cut chicken and are cutting chicken, 
make sure you wash your hands really well so that you're not cross-contaminating. Okay, so I've just added my chicken here on a single layer on the bottom of my pan and my pan is now on medium to high heat. So now we're gonna cook our chicken. So before they cook too much, I'm actually just gonna take salt here and put some salt right on the top. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my pepper. I'm just gonna put pepper right on the top here. And you can put as much or as little pepper as you'd like. Same with salt. It's really just for, for taste. I'm gonna put a little bit more salt. Okay, and chicken cooks quite fast. It only takes three to four minutes on each side to fully cook. So after about three minutes, we're gonna flip each piece over and then cook it again for a few minutes on each side. If you feel you need to, you can turn down your heat and keep an eye on some of the smaller pieces. So if you have some smaller pieces, you may need to flip them sooner than a few minutes. I have a couple small pieces here that I'm just gonna go ahead and flip over. And they're gonna be golden brown and they're gonna be completely cooked through. So I'm gonna look and see. So these are looking pretty good. It's a bit, we're coming up on about three minutes here. So I'm just gonna start flipping over my chicken. They're nice and golden brown. I'm using tongs because it's a bit easier to flip over each piece. So keep flipping over your chicken. They look really nice. Yeah, it's really important that you make sure your chicken is fully cooked through. So it's definitely okay to take a knife and cut a few pieces open to make sure they're completely cooked on the inside. So we're gonna leave this for a couple more minutes here. And then what I need you to do while you're doing this, grab your garlic and have it ready to go because we're gonna add a little bit to our pan in just a second here.
Okay, so these are looking pretty good so far. So again, you can go ahead and grab a knife, have one handy, so that you can check to make sure that your chicken is fully cooked through. To know that it's fully cooked through is for it to be no longer pink. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut open one of the bigger pieces that I have. Okay, so I'll try and show you what I have here. Okay, so that's what I have so far. I'll try and show really close. So it's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit pink. So I'm going to keep cooking my chicken for about 30 more seconds. It's really important that you make sure all of your chicken is cooked through. Okay. So let's go ahead and cut one more piece open. Almost there. I'm just gonna take my wooden spoon and stir them a little bit. So as you can see, the chicken really reduced in size. Okay, so now that they're just about done, go ahead and grab your garlic. And we're gonna take about a small teaspoon of garlic and add it to our pan. If you really love garlic, you can go ahead and add more if you'd like. And we're just going to give it a stir for about 30 seconds. You're going to let the garlic cook in here. And go ahead and get your vegetables ready. Grab your bowl of vegetables here and go ahead and add them to the pan. I have gone ahead and reduced my heat to low. And we're just gonna give this a stir. That looks really nice. So we're really starting to get a stir fry here. Okay, so now that my pan's on low, it's actually time to go ahead and get our sauces ready. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the camera back a little bit and I'm gonna keep this on the stove on low heat for now. So keep this the way it is and we're gonna go ahead and start making our sauces now. Okay, so we are on to our sauces here. So go ahead and grab a medium-sized bowl and a whisk. You're gonna also need to get ready your chicken broth or vegetable broth, your honey and your soy sauce. So we're gonna combine our honey, chicken broth, and soy sauce together in this bowl. So first, I'm gonna add, remember, so I'm using vegetable broth, but if you're using chicken broth, go ahead and grab that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my vegetable broth. And we need to add one quarter cup. So a quarter cup of vegetable broth here, or chicken broth, whatever you're using. A quarter cup. So there is a quarter cup there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put my vegetable broth aside. Now I'm going to add the honey. So we need three tablespoons of honey. So you might want to grab a um, spatula so that you can get the honey off of your tablespoon here. So there's one tablespoon of honey. And it will soften up as soon as we put it into our pan here. The honey goes really nice with the garlic in this recipe. So there's two. And there's three. I'm just, I just did really, um, I just did three scoops three regular tablespoon scoops of my honey. I wasn't too precise. Now we're gonna go ahead and add our soy sauce. So we're gonna use, so we're gonna use two tablespoons of soy sauce. If you'd like to add more, you can. Technically your recipe says to add a quarter cup, but for me, soy sauce is really strong so I'm just gonna use two tablespoons. So there's one, and there's two. I'm gonna do a tiny bit more. So I did about two and a half tablespoons. So I'm just gonna put this aside. And we're just gonna whisk this together as best as we can in this bowl here. And then we are going to add it over our chicken here in just a second. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this aside. Go ahead and grab another small bowl and put a tablespoon of cold water inside. So grab a small bowl and a tablespoon of cold water. Now you're gonna grab your cornstarch and you're gonna add two teaspoons of cornstarch into this bowl. Sorry, two, two, yes, two teaspoons. Two teaspoons of cornstarch. So go ahead and use the back of a butter knife to level it off. I'm gonna move this so you can see what I'm doing. So there's one teaspoon. And here's my second teaspoon. So I've just added it to my small bowl here with my cold water. So you might be wondering what this is for. So this is actually our thickening agent. So I'm just gonna take a fork and mix it together just like that. So this is what's gonna make our sauce, our soy sauce mixture, thick. Just a small stir. Okay, so now we're gonna take our honey and soy sauce mixture here and pour it over our vegetables. Make sure you get all of the honey out from the bottom of your bowl. There's a good chance you'll have some that are sticking some that's sticking here. And we're just going to stir this a bit. And I'm gonna turn my heat up to about medium. So again, this is our sauce here that's going to thicken once we add our cornstarch and water. Okay, so we're almost done almost there. So we're just going to put this in for about 30 seconds. So now remember make sure your stove is on medium to high heat now because we're going to bring our sauce to a boil. So go ahead and add your cornstarch and water mixture to your pan and as you mix 
with, with your heat being on high and with our cornstarch and water, in just a few minutes here, you'll notice that your sauce will become much thicker than it was. So I'm actually just going to move the, move the camera a little bit closer for, you, closer for you so you can see what this looks like. So as you can see, our sauce has come to a boil and that's what we want. We want our sauce to come to a boil because as you can see, now that it's come to a boil, our sauce has thickened a lot. And that's exactly what we want. And we're actually almost done here. As soon as your sauce is thick, you're actually done this recipe. Mine is a perfect consistency, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my stove off. I have a really nice thick sauce here. It's coated my vegetables and it's coated my chicken. So this is our very basic stir chicken stir fry recipe. So something that goes really nice with stir fry, I'm sure you all know, is rice. So you can go ahead and cook some rice according to the boxed instructions. So I'm gonna cook some rice but to, to go with my stir fry, but if you'd like to cook noodles or something else to go with that, you absolutely can. So please just cook your rice according to the, the box recipe at the back. I may or may not show you how to do this just because it's pretty self-explanatory on the back. So I will attach a photo at the end of this video so you can see the final product. But I hope that it was relatively easy for you to follow along with and I hope you find it really nice and tasty as well. Please send me photos of what you made. I'd love to see. And thank you so much for tuning in again, and I'll see you next time.